Hey everyone, welcome to this video in the Katie Explained series. Today we're going to be talking all about my methodology. Uh, and I really get asked a question like, you know, how do you hunt for bugs? What's your methodology? And I really just wanted to spend some time answering that question. Uh, it's not detailed enough to make up a full video, it's quite informal. But I thought it would still be useful to have a chat about it. So this video is also, like the previous video, sponsored by Integrity. Um, they are an ethical hacking platform, just like HackerOne and BugCrowd, um, but they focus more on European customers, so a lot of their targets are European. You don't have to be European, um, they're definitely a smaller platform compared to some of their competitors, but they are so active on social media, they really engage with the community, and they really don't just invest in, like me, they invest in quite a lot of other creators, doing videos, as well as doing newsletters and they're letting me create the content I want to make um, and I really don't take having like a sponsorship and an advertiser on this channel very lightly. I want you to know that I really do consider them to do amazing things for the bug bounty community um, and if you're not already a member you can sign up on the link on screen so that's go.integrity.com forward slash katie or forward slash inside a phd a sponsorship really helps me invest more into the channel. Um, what you might be noticing is I have a new audio setup and that really wouldn't be possible without their support. So let's get on with the video. I get asked about my methodology a lot. Um, you know, what's your methodology? How do you find bugs? And I think a lot of people want to know this so they could replicate it for themselves. Um, and I should say I have, you know, if there's an alignment table of methodologies, I'm chaotic, chaotic something, probably chaotic good. Um, I really don't have like a formal methodology uh, and I don't have these really complex in-depth documents, um, but I thought I'd still want to share it with you guys so you could see a different way of hunting for books. So this is my methodology. Step one is to figure out what an application or a feature does, like what's the business logic behind it, I can't go to a target and not know what their end goal is. You know, uh, do they take payments? Are they a social network? Um, is what What is it a way of doing? Like, why does this application exist? And I can't dig down into a feature unless I really understand it. So I take a lot of time in understanding what something does and how it works. Uh, I then click every button. You know, sometimes I do some fuzzing, but to be honest, I mostly just click every button. This was great advice given to me by Cody Brocious, who was just like, just click every button. And you know what? It's never led me, <laughs> it's never led me astray so far. And then when I click every button, I'm looking for interesting endpoints. Um, you know, ones that I think, okay, that could be hackable. You know, that has some reflected input. That's the kind of process I'm going through. So let's have a chat about these one by one. So the first one here is figure out what an application actually does. This is really all about mapping out functionality. So this is a real screenshot of my burp setup for one of my targets I'm working on. Um, and I often label um, endpoints with what the business logic is. So in this case, we've got some kind of social network. Where we have avatars, you know, Here's the endpoint that uploads the avatar. Here's one that finds it by an ID, for example. Here's one when you modify a contact. This is what it's sending. Uh, and as you can see, oftentimes I don't label them at all. What can I say? Chaotic. Um, and the real point of this process is really to map out a request to what it does. And specifically so I know in my brain what it does and I know what I'm aiming for. This can really help when I start to like, when I find a bug and start to think about impact. Um, I can know what an application does, I understand why it exists, and I can take from that and go, oh, well, obviously this particular um, feature would give you access to payments, or it would give you uh, the ability to have an XSS payload on like a really important and really kind of visible uh, feature, for example. So it really helps knowing as like a human what I'm actually looking at. Uh, so that's kind of my mapping out functionality part. Let's talk about clicking every button and fuzzing. Now, a lot of people have this kind of idea that recon is this really complicated thing where you run like all these different commands, you obtain subdomains, like you're a dragon hoarding treasure. Um, and that's not at all how I do recon. <laughs> I really do just kind of 
follow my nose a little bit, use some intuition, click every button. I'm not very good at recon, and if you've watched the first video of my recon series, you'll know this is something I actually want to learn a lot more about, and you know, how to do it, how to do it really well, and how to be very productive. I'm not very good at recon, so I rely on my secret technique, which is hit every button. I want to get every endpoint in burp, even if they don't necessarily seem very useful for hacking, you know, maybe... Um, it's not a reflected input, it doesn't have an ID. I still want to know that feature, what it hits, because that might be useful later. Like I was saying before, when it comes to impact, I'm really looking at the kind of business impact, like the literal business impact, not just uh, I can get a alert one to fire. I'm like, well, actually, I've got an alert one, but more importantly... Um, I have an ability to call this via CSRF, for example. So I can really start to show not just, you know, the very simple impact, but the real, like, the kind of impacts that make a customer, like your target, to go, wow, we need to fix that one, because that, mm, not liking that. So I usually test AIs, um, APIs, sorry, where I end up kind of looking at what might be called, you know, additional context. So I'm not necessarily hacking the main app, but I'm looking, okay, this has a mobile app and it has an API and it has a web app and it has a different API. I tend to focus on targets that have quite detailed APIs. And I think that's because really I'm a developer at heart. Like I'm like formally trained as a developer. So for me, um, I'm going, okay, API points. What am I looking at? You know, uh, testing word lists to try and find additional endpoints. Sometimes I might fuzz for some vulnerabilities, especially if it's not something I'm familiar with. Um, I might just run, you know, the equivalent of like a blind SQL injection. I might just run like a test for a vulnerability while I'm kind of doing that additional research to figure out how vulnerable it is and what the results of that test really tell me about the vulnerability. So one example might be, you know, you can put in an uh, unarbitrary file, right? But what does that actually tell you about the vulnerability? What I might do is I might look at some arbitrary file uh, payloads, uh, send them and fuzz for them while I'm really doing the research, like the actual research to figure out, okay, what, what does this failing tell me about the vulnerability? That kind of level of kind of thinking, we'll see that in a moment. So identifying interesting endpoints, um, this is really something that comes with either a lot of years as a developer uh, and looking kind of at your own code and realizing what you messed up or a lot of time hacking to realize what other people have messed up. Sometimes CTFs can help you teach this skill and really it's about your intuition more than anything else. So what is an interesting endpoint? Well, I'm looking for signs of vulnerabilities. I'm sitting there going through my endpoints and going, okay, there's an ID here. I'm thinking IDOR. There's a reflected input. I'm thinking XSS. There's some kind of complex process. I'm thinking business logic. I'm seeing a lot of data coming out of the API. I'm thinking information exposure, information disclosure. I'm kind of tailoring my response to the endpoints that I see. I'm not just testing kind of blindly, I'm making sure that I'm fully aware of why I'm testing for a certain vulnerability. Um, and you know, sometimes these don't lead to anything, you know, an ID doesn't necessarily mean there's an IDOR there, it means there could be an IDOR there. But that just means that I know how I'm going to adjust my testing and how I'm going to change things. So I kind of go through this cycle. Once I've got an interesting endpoint, so I've got my uh, API endpoint that has a ID in it. I go through this kind of, okay, I'll try an exploit. Like I'll try a sample IDOR exploit. Does it work? And often it won't work first time. You know, when you hack, you rarely ever get something to work the very first time you try it. If you do, you're very, very lucky. But what you need to take from that is work out why it doesn't work. In XSS, for example, you might try a basic payload. It doesn't work. It gets filtered out. And then you can adjust the exploit you try for the filters. So is it filtering out, you know, the tags? Um, is it filtering out um, the, like, just the alert? And that can really change your approach to um, understand changing that exploit, right, and trying it again. So going through each kind of stage there, so what makes someone go from kind of an interesting endpoint to a vulnerable 
endpoint. And really what I'm looking for is I'm performing tests for a bug. If I see an idol, change the ID. If I think there's an XSS, run a simple payload. And then I'm thinking, okay, did it work? If it did work, I'm then going, okay, full exploit proof of concept. And if it doesn't work, I'm like, okay, why did it fail? You know, can I do something else to change it? To really get back to this cycle of try an exploit, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Change the exploit, try the exploit, doesn't work. And this is often when why you won't necessarily find bugs by just doing throwing uh, darts in the dark, right? You can't just put an XSS payload on every single website you visit. You've got to be smart about it. You've got to figure out why it doesn't work. You've got to, if you're interested in XSS, I'm really focusing on that because it's quite a good one because it gets filtered very obviously. Um, but if you're looking at an XSS, for example, and you see a filter for it and it doesn't work, it gets filtered out, you should then be adapting to the filter. You should be maybe looking at the JavaScript, seeing if, you know, why it didn't work. Um, you should really be adapting your process to match kind of the ex what, what is actually there in front of you. So this is the cycle, but oftentimes I get to, you know, I've tried the exploit like 30 different times and I just expect this next one to not work either. But actually maybe it does. And what I've got here is kind of trying the exploit and exploiting it, which you might think are two very different, I like basically the same thing. But your testing exploit won't be the same as your proof of concept exploit because a proof of concept exploit really has to demonstrate impact if you want to make any money. So exploiting the vulnerable. I'm looking for the maximum impact of a bug. I'm looking to escalate it. If I've got an XSS, I'm looking for a, a good CSRF to um, escalate it on. I'm looking for the business logic implications. I've got my notes from previously from when I was looking at every single endpoint and think about what it does. So I can go and say, these are the implications for your business. And if you want to get really good at bug bounty hunting, if you really want to pursue this as like a big thing, you need to be very good at proving you're right. So you need to get to this exploit stage here, right? The actually it does work and write an exploit that shows this. Yes, this works. And yes, you should be very worried about it. And yeah, you should fix that ASAP and please pay me. So in kind of like a summary uh, of my methodology, I don't really do a lot of automation. I really do follow, prefer to like follow my nose and use intuition rather than running automated tools. I also find that when you run automated tools, you don't get a lot of useful information from it that is actually human readable. If you're really good, maybe you have tools that um, can interpret that information, but actually getting it from even like file on computer to interpretable file on computer, you don't necessarily have human interpretation from that. Um, and I really don't use a lot of tools either. Like I really just prefer to work with burp and really work with what I know. Um, I tend to curate my own word lists. I don't tend to do a lot of automation there. And I kind of think that if you can hunt bugs manually, at least to start out, you really will become a better bug bounty hunter just because um, you understand the bugs. Like you're not just sitting there running random payloads. You're being very thoughtful about what you run. You're running it with intention. You're not just stopping when you've got like alert one to pop up. You're making that extra step to creating not just... Uh, a, a single bug but okay here's the bug here's how you exploit it here's everything you can do and this is why you should be worried so i hope you found that video useful i do realize that my experience in bug bounty hunting is perhaps not the same as those people that have like these crazy complex systems i think there is a certain beauty in chaos and really not focusing in on I've got to learn this tool and this tool and this tool and really focusing on actually I need to be able to find bugs and exploit them because fundamentally bug hunting is not about the tools you use it's about the bugs you find and how you can exploit them so I hope you found this useful and interesting what I'd really appreciate if you've got you know different stories about how you hunt bugs 
um, share them in the comments. You know, let's not just make the only methodologies out there the really complex, difficult to understand ones. Let's bring some chaos into it. So thank you once again to Integrity who sponsored this video very kindly. Help me upgrade my microphone. Um, you no longer legally, you cannot complain about the audio anymore. It's now illegal to complain about my audio. Um, so thank you very much. I will see you all next week. I'm going to talk about burp and kind of do another beginner's guide to burp because my other video looks like it was filmed on a potato. But now I know how to record a video successfully. Got Took a few videos, but I got there eventually. So I hope you look forward to that and I will see you all next week. Thank you for watching.